Hi, I'm Connie Huck. I was going to be coming to Hexham to appear at the first ever very exciting children's book festival, but sadly it wasn't to be. So the lovely people at Hexham Book Festival are putting as much as possible online. Yay! So you can enjoy everything from the comfort of your sofa, all the books and all the stories. And don't forget to look at the charity that this is supporting, um, the Children's North East Charity. It'll really really help those families who are struggling at the moment hope you all stay well and hopefully i will see you in 2021 bye hello i'm going to read you a little extract from my book it's called cookie and the most annoying boy in the world this here is cookie she's nine years old um and in this book she's at absolutely devastated because her best friend in the whole wide world, Kazaya, is about to move house. And um, Cookie used to feel like she didn't really fit in that much. And then when Kazaya came and joined her school, everything seemed better. But now Kazaya's going. And then this guy, Jake, is moving into town. And Cookie thinks Jake is the most annoying boy in the world. But annoying is subjective meaning that it's in the eye of the beholder, so it's someone's opinion. So whereas Cookie thinks Jake is annoying, someone else might think Jake is super cool. And in fact, you can always change your opinion, so maybe by the end of the book, Cookie won't think he's annoying at all. You'll have to read to find out. Now the chapter I'm going to read from is chapter four, and in this chapter, Cookie bumps into her favorite teacher, Ms. Krantz in the Cash and Carry. If you're wondering what a Ms. is, well, it's not a Mrs. A Mrs. is a lady that's married, and it's not a Miss. That's a lady that isn't married. But a Ms. is a mystery, which means that you're not quite sure. They could be married, or they might not be. Like with a mister, you just don't know. So any girls out there, it's quite cool to call yourself a Ms. in the name of equality. In this chapter, Cookie bumps into Ms. Krantz in the cash and carry. Cash and carry is like a giant supermarket. And instead of buying, for instance, one can of beans in a cash and carry, you buy a crate of cans of beans. Or instead of buying a bottle of fizzy drink, you'd buy a whole load of bottles of fizzy drink. Everything is bigger in the cash and carry. Instead of having normal shopping trolleys, you have airport trolleys, so you can pile on loads and loads of things. Now, the funny thing about bumping into your teachers is that although you see them every day in school, you don't know much about them out of school. For instance, have you ever thought about the fact that your teacher might be one of three identical triplets. There could be two other people that look exactly like your teacher roaming around the earth. Or maybe your teacher loves jumping out of airplanes with a parachute of a weekend or abseiling down a cliff face. We just don't know much about what our teachers get up to out of school. Who knows, your teacher could even be an international jewel thief. In this chapter, Cookie bumps into Ms. Krantz, the mysterious Ms. Krantz and uh, decides to play detective. Chapter four, Bluey. Ms. Krantz is in the cash and carry. What's she doing here? She's in the sweet section, the best section. There are buckets of cola bottles stacked up next to tubs of gummy bears and there's a gap in between them so I can see through into the next aisle. She's getting a bucket of marshmallow flumps. Wow, she is such a cool teacher. Knowing her, she's probably going to dish them out one by one to each member of her new class at the start of term as a welcome present. What a nice touch. I can't wait. It's so strange seeing teachers out of school. She is wearing normal civilian clothes, a baggy oversized hoodie, leggings and trainers, very unteachery. She looks more like a celebrity in a paparazzi shop when they're in scruffy, no makeup mode, but look cool anyway. I don't want her to see me or dad. That would be a bit weird. Teachers are for school life, not normal life. The two worlds don't mix. Plus, it's kind of fun spying on her. I wonder what else she's buying. Can't see from here if she has a trolley. Gonna follow her and find out more. Is she alone? If not, who's she with? 
Is it her husband? Do they own a shop? What does it sell? Does it sell cereal? Does she have sugar in her cereal? Or does she have sugar in her tea? Does she even drink tea? Or is she a coffee person? If so, cappuccino or espresso? Does she pick her nose? What does she do with the bogeys? Does she use emojis? So many questions. I quite fancy myself as a private detective. She is walking with purpose. I am hot on her heels. Something catches her eye and she turns around to look. I quickly duck out of the way behind a mountain of Turkish delight. I'm not a fan. I like chocolate and I like jelly, but not together in the same mouthful. She's looking at a sign about made-to-order cakes. Perhaps she's having a party. She seems like the type that would throw lots of parties. I reckon she has loads of friends. Maybe some of them are even famous. There's probably a chef who cooks the food in an outdoor area with sofas and fairy lights. Maybe even a chocolate fountain to dip fresh fruit and marshmallow flumps in. Yes, that's it. The flumps are for the party. I bet Ms. Krantz throws the coolest parties. She turns back. Looks like she doesn't want a maid to order cake on this occasion. Phew, she doesn't see me. She's walking with purpose again, and I'm right there behind her. Before I know it, she's striding towards the checkouts. Past the queue, past the cash stills, past the security garden, straight out of the shop. What? I am dumbfounded. Miss Krantz is taking the flumps without paying. Miss Krantz is a shoplifter. No way. There's a security guard by the exit doors and she strides right past him with complete confidence. She is even smiling at him. How brazen. Unbelievable. Wait till I tell Kaziah. Krantz has gone way down in my estimation. Thief. Did I imagine the whole episode? I just saw my favourite teacher shoplifting and not just any old thing, but a whole bucket of marshmallow flumps. Don't get me wrong, it's better than a gold watch or a laptop, but it's much worse than taking one marshmallow flump from the pick and mix. That would be small time. This is medium time. I need to assess my options. One, tell the security guard. Hmm. But then they'll detain her, call the police and she'll get taken away. She might get a criminal record and it would ruin her life. All for a bucket of sweets. Two, wait till school starts and she tries to give out the stolen goods to class. Then tell the head, but it would be my word against hers and no one would believe a pupil against a teacher. She might even try to frame me. Three, let her know that I know by subtly mentioning flumps to her all the time. That will play with her mind and freak her out and the guilt will be her punishment. In the end, I decide to do nothing. What's a bucket of flumps in the grand scheme of things? I'm sure this is a blip rather than a regular occurrence. Even after I find my dad, I can't stop thinking about it. What if she stole other stuff too? Valuable stuff. How do I know there weren't stolen jewels hidden in her hoodie? Maybe that's why she's wearing a hoodie. Hood up for more complex thefts. I have failed as a detective. The shame. I feel a bit glum now in the knowledge that my favourite teacher is a petty criminal. Worse still, for all I know, she could be an international jewel thief. The flumps theft may have just been because she felt a bit peckish. Maybe she just needed a sugar fix before planning her next big heist. Dad must notice me looking glum because he offers to buy me a slice of pizza. Well, that is something I won't pass up. I choose mushroom because the other option is pepperoni, which we don't eat as it's pork. Although to tell you the truth, I'm going through a phase where I'm trying not to eat so much meat in general. The fact that sheep recognise faces and I want a pet makes eating meat feel a bit hypocritical. Kaziah and her dad have always been vegetarian, and at first I was like, what? You've never had a coronation chicken sandwich? You are missing out. But it's kind of annoying when people say that to me about bacon. And so I've learnt, you don't miss something you don't have. I don't miss eating swan or guinea pig or squirrel, because I've never even tried them. Susie Ashby ate snails in the south of France once. I heard her bragging about it to her best friend Alison Denby. I mean, snails are basically slugs with shells, and you don't eat the shells, so basically she ate slugs. Hardly something to brag about. But Susie could brag about doing a poo if she put her mind to it.
Once Dad has got everything he needs for the restaurant, he keeps his promise and we stop by the local pet shop. It's called Woof Meow Squeak and it's always a bit smelly. A woofy combination of sawdust and hamster poo, but it's well worth it because of Bluey. Bluey is the most gorgeous kitten in the whole wide world. She has a glossy black coat and the most magical piercing blue eyes with four soft white paws and a fluffy white tip on her tail to match. Adorable. I always make a beeline straight for her, past all the other animals. She always looks happy to see me. I've visited her throughout the summer holidays, practically since she was born. And one day, she will be mine. I'm just not sure how. I tried convincing Dad on the way here, and they get the usual lecture about pets being messy and needing constant looking after, and how he and Mum are too busy to do that when I've given up because the novelty's worn off. Novelty? Bluey is not a novelty. She'll never wear off. She'll be my new best friend once Kaziah's gone. I head towards Bluey's cage, but before I can even stroke her through the bars, a boy with browny blonde hair swept to one side as if he's in a boy band barges past me and straight over to her. Here he is, Mum, he cries out excitedly. Meet Nigel. Nigel? Huh? For one thing, Bluey's a she, not a he. And who calls a cat Nigel? It's like calling your hamster Stuart or your dog Margaret. It's not a pet name, it's a person name. And besides, Bluey is my cat. I want to lie and say, stop, there's been a mistake. I've already put down a deposit. I'm just waiting for her bed and scratching post to be delivered and then I'm taking her home. But it isn't true, so I don't. Instead, I just watch as Bluey is stolen away from my life forever, right in front of my eyes. It all happens so fast. The boy and his mum seem so happy and pleased with themselves. I feel so sad and forlorn. Keziah is going. Ms. Krantz is a shoplifter. And now Bluey is gone. Forever. And then Dad starts calling me from the front of the shop and pointing at his watch, so I have to go. I knew that bird poo wouldn't be lucky. So that was chapter four from Cookie. I really hope you enjoyed it. Why not have a think about your own teachers? Do you have a favourite teacher? Maybe your favourite teacher isn't quite what they seem. It'd be a really cool idea if you wrote a story about a teacher, maybe one you like or maybe one you don't like. And imagine what secret your teacher has. Perhaps there's something your teacher gets up to of a weekend that no one in the school knows about. When writing a story, it's really important to have a think about your characters. It's good to have characters that have very defined character traits. Now, a character trait is something that describes a person. So, for instance, it could be that they're brave and that they're outgoing and that they're outspoken and that they're gung-ho and feisty. And if you have a character like that, you'll know that in any situation, they'll act according to their character traits. Whereas if you have a character that's shy and meek and mild and likes to keep themselves to themselves, you'll know that they'll act totally differently to the character that I mentioned that was feisty. So if you have, for instance, a fire in your story, a character that's brave, will act totally different from a character that's shy and retiring. It's really important to keep your characters defined and then any situation you put in your story, you'll know that your characters will act accordingly to be in line with their character traits. It's quite a good tip. Maybe you also want to have a little think about how to begin your story. Now, people often ask me, oh, how do you know what to write about? How common is it to sit down at a blank piece of paper and not have a clue what to start writing? I always think a good tip is to write about things you relate to. For instance, if you like doing ballet, maybe your story will be about a ballerina. Maybe you want to make your teacher's secret addiction ballet. Maybe that's what your teacher does when she's not in school. She's busy performing in ballets. You can let your imagination run wild and once you start writing your story then you can bring anything into it you can take it into the fantastical maybe there are aliens or monsters or you go to space but it's easier to bring these things into the story once you've started about writing things that you can relate to that's only a tip but if you're not sure how to start your story 
But if you do know already, that's fine. Let your imagination run wild. But there are words in that story that you weren't quite sure about. Remember, subjective means that it's something that's based on your opinion. So, for instance, if I like this jumper and someone else doesn't, no one's right and no one's wrong. It's their own opinion. My taste dictates that I think this jumper's nice, but someone else might not like it as much. And everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But it's also good to keep your mind open so that you can change your opinion on someone or something. What else did you learn? A cash and carry is a giant supermarket. People go there to stock their shelves if they're a restaurant or a shop owner. So instead of buying one bottle of lemonade, you might buy a crate of bottles of lemonade from a cash and carry. Everything is bigger in the cash and carry. Like I said before, instead of normal trolleys, like in a supermarket, you often get airport trolleys so that you can carry loads and loads of things. Have a think about where you want to set your story. Mine was set in the cash and carry. But you could put your situation anywhere, maybe in a pet shop, or maybe at the doctor's surgery. Have a little think. Unusual locations can sometimes be fun. Remember, Cookie's favourite teacher, Ms. Krantz, is a Ms. And a Ms. can be a Miss or a Mrs. You just don't know whether they're married or not. And in the name of equality, it's good to be a Ms. Um, equality is something that's really important in life. And it's the thought that all people should be treated equal, no matter what their skin colour, what their religion, no matter how they look or how they act or what their tastes or what their preferences are. People should have the same rights, whether they're a man or a woman, whether they're big or small. And that's really important. That's equality. What else did you learn in that chapter? Did you notice that Cookie doesn't eat pork? That's because Cookie comes from a Muslim family and they don't eat pork in her family. And different cultures, different races and different religions have different traditions or different things that they stick to. And equality is also all about understanding other people's preferences and behaviours, mindsets, cultures and ideologies. It's so good to keep an open mind so that you can relate to each other. Have a little think about your characters. In that chapter, we met Cookie, who's our main character. She's feisty, she's outgoing. We also mentioned Kaziah. That's Cookie's best friend. Kaziah is very measured, but also very bright and intelligent. Um, she's a kind of laid back person and Cookie likes that. She's very dependable and very safe. She's also funny as well, but she's not loud and outgoing like Cookie. Miss Krantz is Cookie's favorite teacher who we met. And Cookie kind of looks up to her and idolises her a bit. Um, we'll see if that changes after the shoplifting incident. And then Cookie also mentioned Susie Ashby. Susie Ashby is a girl in Cookie's school that loves to brag about everything. And she loves to have everything perfect and everything looking nice. And she's a little bit annoying. When you're writing your story, think of really cool characters that you can weave into it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that chapter and I hope you'll continue to keep reading and keep writing stories. It's so important. Studies have shown the more books that you read, the more far you'll go in life, the better people do. And books are so important for something called empathy. Empathy makes people kind. It means that you can put yourself into other people's shoes and books give empathy to people more than anything. So guys, keep reading and keep writing and I'll see you next time.